thought maybe something hot would wash it down. <laughs> you stop me singing, though. All right. <laughs> be in Matthew chapter 13 today. Matthew 13. Chapter 13. Just got done uh, Matthew. Of course we've got done Matthew chapter 12. And uh, That was a, a good chapter. We had learned that Jesus had said, you know, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll, I'll give you rest. You have to understand, he had just taken some guys and just made these guys, um, uh, he just made them apostles in chapter 10, and and uh, then he sent them forth, and, and he, you know, he's calling people for his name, and he's sending them forth, you know, and, and, and he went through, uh, then he had John the Baptist, if you remember, in chapter 11. John and he told you. He said, "Look, uh, uh, John. He he was the he was born greatest among among women, but even him, he he's least in the kingdom of heaven." You know, uh, uh, and then he went into chapter uh, twelve, and in chapter twelve, uh, at the very end, he dealt with um, he dealt with. Well, first it was the Sabbath. You remember what's all this Sabbath talk? You know, um, you know they started to think like. These religious ceremonies, these religious things, uh, uh, they were where it was at, not realizing all these things were just pointing to Christ, and, and they didn't take the spiritual content of anything, and when he shows up, they don't even know who he is. Hopefully, when uh, we get there, we know who he is. Yeah, well, they knew John the Baptist. Sure, because yeah. he was one of them. You know, uh, the world, they know who you are. Uh, they have your social security number. Oh, Yeah. Nobody thinks of that. They know who you are. I mean, they send you letters. Uh, you go back Monday morning or, or during, yeah, during this time, uh, you're going to know. They know who you are. How's that? They're going to keep sending you junk mail with your name on it, trying to get you to their stores. Mm -hmm. What's that? They know who you are. <laughs> yeah, kind of the world crazy. loves its own. They, you give them business or something like that, you know? And uh, they know who you are. It's, it's, uh, but they didn't know who he was because he wasn't of this world. Right. Yeah. Amen. Uh, <laughs> so uh, now let's look at first uh, chapter thirteen. The Bible says the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and a great and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that so that he went into a ship. And sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. So you see what he's doing? He's going to use the way he's going to use the water to deflect his voice across. So a lot of people are going to hear right in it, right there. Oh, really? Wow. Yes, uh, you know, uh, sound ba bounces basically. Okay, it works on frequencies. And uh, then he says in verse number three, he says, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying. Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell on the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where uh, they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, that's the important part, they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and, and the thorns uh, sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirty. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Let's pray right there. Father, thank you, Lord God. I ask you to bless this time. Bless, uh, bless the preaching, the teachings, Lord Father, again. Lord Father, our good friends, uh, Brian, and, and also for Richard, and, and also, Lord Father, for Duel, and, and also for Hal Roscoe, Lord. We just pray, Lord God, that this would be their day, Lord Father, also. I know it's your day, Lord, but you'd wake this, this thing up, and uh, 
just move heaven and earth if you have to, Lord, Father, for these people. We love them. We love you most. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So um, Jesus, is he's, uh, he leaves that house. Of course, there's great multitudes around. But you know what the biggest problem with the, greatest, the great multitudes? They're taking a choice. And what's out there is uh, the same choice that somebody like Jonah made. It's the same choice that uh, you have to make. Um, Yvonne, you made that choice at one time. Uh, what you going to serve? Uh, you're saved, but uh, and you're you know a lot of things. But uh, let me tell you something. Sometimes you got to be alert, learning how to choose between your uh, your religions, and and you have to learn to choose between that and God. Uh, you say, what about Jonah? Well, Jonah was trying. Jonah's hard part was Jonah had to make a decision. Did he love Israel more than God, or God more than Israel? And actually, he, he loved Israel more than God. And he struggled with it. That's why he was all upset at the end. Hey, look, you know, preach these people, they got right. They're going to come down. He's going to be, they're going to be used to come down and chasten Israel. Amen? Yeah. So, uh, but the multitudes are fit. They like that. You know, they got to make a choice. And the religious leaders are out there. Which one do you want? You want your religion or you want the Lord? You've been waiting all these years for the Lord. But wait a second. We've been doing this religion for a while. Uh, you don't realize the struggle that's in this Bible. I mean, his own his own mother had the struggle. She was on the outside with Al. And, and all of a sudden, she's walking up, and, and, and there's Jesus. Wait a second, uh, you know, if, if, you know, this is a, if you don't believe, you know, you those who are with me, they're my mothers, they're my brothers, you know. They're, they're the people. That's the real family he's showing you. That's the real family. This physical stuff's going to go away. The real family... It's going to be your spiritual family, amen? Amen. And, and that's what he was trying to tell them. Now, you've got to make a choice. And, and that's one of the choices where are we going to find. God says, uh, which one do you choose? i, I got to tell you, 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 you know, uh, your choice is going to make a difference in your life. Amen. You know, uh, you, you know, where's your choice? Okay, I'll give you a choice. Christmas Day runs on a Sunday, and the church's house is open. Where's your choice? you got to understand, where's your choice? Yeah. Most people are going to worry so much about the commercial and uh, and what's happening in their house uh, that they can't, uh, you know. Well, you got to understand, it's that, look, take the Facebook video on another day. We can always see your kids running down the steps if that's what you want. You've got to make a choice. What's important, and if you always put the Lord first, guess, who will, guess what your kids will do when they're older? They'll do the same thing. It's always. <laughs> Amen? So, um, and it says in verse number three, they, they stood on the shore. I, I, I don't want to get into too much of the resident, the science of that. We can understand. The sound bounces. You know, if you go into a lake and you went down the Payne Lake or something like that, stood in the middle and you say something, the echoes and the amplification around that area just takes care of you. You don't even have to speak loud. Same with pulpit rock. Same with God has structures. He's done this. You, you don't realize, see, you're sitting there thinking that Jesus picked that. Look, God picked this out before the universe began where he was going to be that day. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? God picks these things out. That's how, that's how great he has every circumstance right there for every individual that is right there to do what? Come to him. The situations that you're in today is going to bring you closer to God. It's your choice. But that situation is there for you. Amen? And in verse number uh, four, 3, he says, And he spake many things, and he spake to them in parables. Okay? Uh, let's, go to, uh, let's go to Proverbs. Go to Proverbs 1. Parables. He's going to speak to them how? In parables. Now, in, um, in this portion, Solomon uh, writes this part, and God, of course, God's writer through Solomon, using Solomon, and it says, uh, the Proverbs of Solomon, the, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instruction and 
of wisdom, justice, and justice, judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple and to the young men knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase his learning. See? A wise man could increase learning. Mm -hmm. And a, a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise, and their what? Sayings. Dark, dark sayings. sayings yeah. These are dark sayings. I understand this proverb parables are on the same thing. They bring quest they bring you into the passage. Okay? He's talking to them in parables. Why? It's gonna take a little work here. It's going to take a little work to see the Lord in this. It's going to take a little work to see uh, what's going on here. Uh, God wants to bring you forward. He wants you to see these things. And, uh, and, and he wants you to go into that one way. What I look at it as a one way mirror. And as you go in closer and closer and closer. You may see the guys behind it as you get closer. You know it's just a, it's a different mirror. Amen. And he says... Uh, he says, and behold, the sower went to sow. The sower is going to go to sow, he says. And when he sowed, uh, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. Okay. Now, uh, the wayside, if you look at that word wayside, and you did a little study on wayside, what you're going to find is it's always associated or it's associated or uh, brought forth with Proud people or pride, the proud uh, and the uh, wicked, the proud and the wicked, the wayside. Okay, the same with uh, fowls are are looked at as spirit spirits or devils. The fowls of the air. Uh, where do you get that? In Revelation, it's going to bring that out. The fowls are looked at as uh, you know those birds, evil birds, and everything. They're looked at uh, pictured as spirits in the Bible. So, looking at it that way, it says, when he sowed some seeds. Now, what is the seeds? Knowledge. In, okay, in Luke chapter 8, in verse number, uh, I think it's 11, yes, it says, the seed is the what? Word God. of God. God. So, he's throwing the words of God out there. He's talking about truth there, telling people about truth and what happens. Uh, he threw them by the wayside. He threw them to the proud. He threw them to the... Um, to the wicked, and uh, and guess what? And the fowls that are there, the spirits and the devils, what do they do? They they, they take them up. Now, this is in conjunction to another passage. Uh, look down at verse number 19. He says in verse 18, he says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. And... Uh, and it says, and, and when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh who? The, the wicked, wicked one. one. Mm -hmm. The wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. That is, he which receiveth the seed uh, from the wayside. Okay? Uh, the wicked one, he received the seed, and how by the wayside. Let's go over to uh, Genesis. And let's go to Genesis chapter uh, 3. Genesis chapter 3. And um, in Genesis chapter 3, uh, we see a situation here uh, where um, the wicked one comes and uh, the seeds are thrown out. Um, and it says, uh, it says in this part, he says, look at verse number 7. Okay, and it tells you in seven, it says, look, um, it says the eyes of both of them were what? They were open. Open. When they had done something wrong, that their eyes were open. What were their eyes open about? Their eyes are open about because now they had fallen. Right. Okay, their eyes are open that, hey, man, uh, we're away from God. They lost their fellowship with God right there. Right. 
They're no longer sinless. There's no innocence there, you know? And, and you know what happens right there? Uh, basically, they throw everything away that they learned. They, le they threw away what they learned right there. And you know what they started to do? They start picking up things. I gotta make this back. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to get back to God. You know how they're doing it? On their own. Look, it says they sowed fig leaves. They realized they were naked. Their soul was now hiding inside themselves. Everything, they weren't glowing no more. Something had changed. And now all of a sudden they're, they start to make themselves aprons. Well, we're going to cover these things up. Uh, we'll get back to God. We'll just cover this all up. By what? By our works. And, and they're going to try their own method to get to God. And, uh, and what happens is, uh, look at verse number 21. It says, and unto Adam also, and to his wife did the Lord uh, God make coats of skins. And he did what? Clothed them. He clothed them. He clothed them. So what did they have to do? Uh, what did they have to do? What they did, what they had to do was they had to, uh, they had to be willing. They had to be willing. Willing to do what? They had to be willing to take off what they thought. And that's the problem with all the wicked. They don't want to take away what they got to take away, to put on what God has. So everything is taken to the wayside. The devil came. He takes it all away. He takes it all away. When, the, when he comes along, uh, there's some people like that. Um, uh, we deal with them outside. We know who they are. They're wicked. You, you, you uh, go with a, a person. He's not, he's not good with God. You have to understand he's not good with God. See, we're going to deal with four types of people right here. And these four types of people is everybody basically in the, that we have in the world. What's that? They, they, these people, they're the wicked. They're called, um, uh, they, in, in the book of uh, Romans chapter 1, God says, I gave them over to a what? Yeah. Reprobate mind. Uh, uh, these are people not only do, uh, do, do, they're not good with God, they're not on the positive with God. See, God looks down and he's seeing something. What's that? He sees saved and lost. These people aren't good with God. I, I'm looking down. No, 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 don't see, don't see that. Don't see the word. Don't see the Savior. Don't see the heart. I'm looking at the heart. I don't see it. Don't see it. What's that? They're not saved. And they're not good with God. But you know who else they're not good with? They're not good with man. They're not good with man anyway. Why? Uh, because they're, they don't live a, a good life either. They don't attend to those things that will help them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, they're not good with God and they're not good uh, with man. Amen. Uh, the, 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 that's how uh, God could look at that. Uh, um, let me see. Uh, God looks at it. It's going to see it three ways. I'll show you. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. It's the uh, uh, chapter where God uh, looks for uh, a new king. He's looking for a new king. And, uh, and he comes down, and he, he, he sees the seed, he's going into the, the, the Jesse, the, root, the Jesse's kids, and he's going to pick a king out of there, and, and they bring up Eliab first, and you'll notice in verse number 6, it says, and it came to pass when they were come, that's uh, Jesse's sons, that he looked on Eliab, that's the firstborn, Eliab, and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before uh, him. He takes a natural judgment. Guy's pretty big. Uh, Saul was a big guy. I, I looked at him. Uh, but I, now I'm looking at Iliab. He looks good. It's a good kid. Okay? Uh, now watch. It says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on, on, on the height of his stature. Why is that? Because I have refused who? Him. Yeah. I've refused him. See, Samuel is a man. Samuel, amen, right? Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. He's a pleasing to man, this guy. That, that's the difference. See, some people are pleasing to you. Uh, I watched uh, for years, there were some preachers that just looked that part. I was like, man, that guy looks good. Uh, 
a good friend of mine down, uh, he's in, he's, he was down in New Jersey, we went there. Boy, I can tell you right now, if you go into his church, you see that guy, he's tall and everything. He looks good. Man, does he look good. He's a good preacher, don't get me wrong. Right. He just keeps in shape and he's very, he's, fat, he's just, just, I mean, this guy looked like he should play basketball uh, for a professional team. And I mean, he, he gets a suit on and you go, whoa, yeah. <laughs> this guy's a real deal. And then you come in here, look at the short, bald, the, the short rounded guy with a big nose and go, yeah, I'd rather go down there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but look what the Lord says here. He says, look, uh, but the Lord said unto Samuel, uh, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, okay? Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth, see? He says, for man looketh where? On the outward appearance. Right. Mm -hmm. But the Lord looketh where? On the heart. heart. The Lord looks on the heart. Amen. Okay? That's the difference between us and God. God's looking at the heart of the man. It's really hard to look at somebody's heart, obviously. Uh, they, you have to hear them speak because what does it say? Out of the, out of, out of the mouth, the heart speaks. Yes. You've got to listen to, the, right. to, the, to what they're saying. And a lot, you've got to get past the junk that they're saying most of the time to see where their heart really is. Okay? So um, he, he, he puts it there. Look uh, here, he says. You, you see, uh, the seed, it was put by this first guy, He was the seed was put by the wayside. Okay? The seed was put by uh, the wayside. That, you know, and that, that looking at the proud, what's that? God resisted the what? He resisted the proud, okay? And you have to understand that they went by the wayside. Now, Jesus is the what? Way. He's the way. They went by the wayside. We need the way. We, it, if it would have said way, we'd have been pretty good, wouldn't we? But no, they, it was put by the wayside. Okay, the proud. and No, we need the way. Okay, that's Jesus. All right, uh, Jesus is the way. But like I said, you keep looking on the outside. God looks on the inside. So somebody could be good with man and not good with God. This guy who we're talking about right here by what it said, he's not good with God. He's not good with man. He's a reprobate. We see them. They go down, go down to the pride parade. You'll see them. Uh, go down. Go go to a uh, go down and you see the tarot readers and all those. That you'll see them. Amen. Yeah. Somebody, you want to tell me my future? Uh, they can only go into your past a little bit and try and play with your mind. Uh, I usually, if I see those people and they deal with them, I tell them their future. <laughs> yeah. Reverse, like, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I know their future. They don't know my future. Right, right. Amen. Uh, look at verse number 5. It says, Some fell on uh, stony places. Now, uh, he says, Where uh, they had not much earth. Okay? And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness. They couldn't go down. The seed couldn't go down because of the like concrete or the stone that's there. So guess what? It can only go up. It can't get any deepness. Uh, we've seen that you you know you make sidewalks and you put stone out there, and uh, what happens is right in between there's usually you know you see the grass that's right there, but sometimes uh, in in the summer what'll happen is the dirt will come up and will go over it, that's right. okay, and it starts to grow. Uh, grow grass or something like that or whatever, but you'll notice it can only come up and you just walk away and you brush it away. Why? Because it can't go down and take root. Okay? So um, these people are usually good with men, but you know what they're not? They're not good with God. See, God looks down. He says, it's got no root. Look what it says in verse number 6. It says, and when the sun was up, they, they were scorched. Yes. They were scorched there. Okay, and, and why is that? Because they had no root, and they withered away. It, that, that word didn't get in deep to their heart. Okay, you got some, I'll give you a for example. You got some people who will come in, uh, and they will hear the word, people that hear the word, they accept it readily. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jesus, yeah. Oh, yes, Jesus. Uh, yes, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, they're looking for a buddy. They're not looking for Jesus. They're looking for a buddy. Okay, Jesus seems to uh, fit, that fits that thing just for the moment. 
Okay, so they get the buddy Jesus thing, and then the next thing you know, so the preacher gets up and he preaches, and, and now they don't like it anymore. You know why? It starts to offend them. Why? Because you got to understand something. Unless you understand you're ungodly, unless you understand you are lost, unless you understand you're a sinner that, of course, commits sin, you can't get what? Yeah, saved. saved. Amen. Right. You're not getting through the gate. You have to understand, Lord, I'm a sinner. You have to understand that condition. What does the Holy Ghost do? He's going to reprove you of sin. Yeah. Okay? Of sin, of not believing on Him. Uh, that's the problem with the, that. What's that? They don't like to hear about sin. Right. Go to uh, verse number 20. Look down at verse number 20. Uh, it says, But he that received the seed in stony places, the same is he that heareth the word and... and Anon with joy receiveth it. See how it says without no, uh, no knowledge, no anon, anonymous, without knowledge. It says, he says he receives, he doesn't understand the back part of it. He, he just understands the name Jesus or something, but he doesn't understand what all comes with that. You know, uh, this is the new, just so you know, this is the movement in Christianity. This is the Joel Osteen movement right there. What's that? I think I'm okay receiving. This is great. Look at great singing. Uh, one day I was witnessing to a guy outside the commissary down at, uh, at Fort uh, Drum. And, and one of the things I said to him was I started talking about Jesus. He said he went to a church. I, uh, he went to this church in Watertown that did rock and roll. They were, uh, it was about the singing and everything else. And um, I started to ask him. Uh, about the gospel. He just, all he said was, man, I don't care. I'm going to that church. I feel good. I said, you'll feel good all the way to hell. That's right. Every week you'll go in, I feel good. And then you leave. What are they doing? They're receiving the word with joy, but they're not receiving it into the heart. It's going into the head. That's it. Mm -hmm. Going into their feelings. Look, you got to understand something. Feelings, it goes like this. It goes spiritual sensual, and then erotical. Okay? Uh, what's this, what's it, what am I meaning? Okay, what I'm saying to you is, spiritual, God is a spirit. If you want to uh, worship Him, you will worship you, you have to worship Him in spirit and truth. It's in your heart. Okay? Spiritual life is not a feeling life. Sensual, down here, it goes to your senses. What you'll notice about your senses is almost all of them are all contained in the head. Yeah. The only one that's out, look, hearing, seeing, you know, uh, those things, smelling, they're all up here. Four of them. The fifth one is touch, and that's all around the body. But almost all of them are up here. Right. <laughs> it makes you get high-minded. Sensual. What's that? Feelings. Oh, yo, uh, altar calls. Got to get up there and cry. I'm moved by the music. Well, you're not moved by the Word of God. That's right. That is the new trend today, people. And just so you know, it's getting into our crowd. Yeah. And our crowd is being moved only by music today. Let's get an altar call. Get up to the, get up to the piano. We're going to have this. And then they don't get the results. What do they do? They keep going with it and going with it. They bring up the better singers and the talented singers. And the next thing you know, it starts from there. Sorry, Charlie. Oh, you want to stop this movement? This is a movement of God. No, this is a movement of sensual order. And there's only one more place to go. And we see it. They come up, and the next thing you know, they start hanging on each other. You know, putting, uh, it's like hugging somebody. You ever notice there's a hug? Uh, uh, if I come over, I hug you. Uh, it's not, I, I hug you. Oh, I want that deep feeling. That's sensual. Okay? And it only goes one more place down. What's that? It can only go down to the mess mm -hmm. of erotical. That's right. Amen? Stay spiritual. What's that? Uh, a brotherly thing. That's right. Thanks. Whatever. Hug back. You know, we're spiritual people. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we see these things. I'm telling you, we, I'm seeing it left and right. People think it's a great thing, you know, and stuff like that. Hey, do what you got to do. Not my problem. Tell you the truth. But I'm going to tell you this. 
That's, you're going to get. You're going into idolatry. Right. And you're going to see it because every evangelist that comes in, that's a big name, is going to talk about an altar, 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 altar calls. It's not I don't like altar calls, but be the Holy Ghost. I shouldn't even have to call it if you really want to. Go, just do it. Get with God. I tell you the, the truth. He said, go, go, go someplace if you want to do it. It's private, better for me. I usually am, I, 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 I usually will do it if they're in my seat or something like that. I, uh, or if it's really bad, I'll leave. Go someplace with the Lord. You know? I've told people, you want to come over? Please go over here. If I, I've had people crying because their heart got struck. Yeah. Okay? And, uh, yeah, get with the Lord. Get with the Lord. That's what it's supposed to do, right? Right. You see? Amen. Uh, we're not going to accentuate a piece of wood. It's still a piece of wood. Amen? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, that guy, he's a guy who uh, he, 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 got, he got the word, but he didn't get it saved. He didn't get saved, and guess what? It just goes away. He gets offended. I'm out of here. We see them all the time come in. They come in, they get offended, bye-bye, they're out the door. Didn't even get saved. All right? We see those people. Uh, who was good? A person who was good with the, he's not good with God, but he's good with men. You, you know any people like that? Uh, how about, I'll give you one. He's good with the people, but he's not good with God. He's not saved. Uh, how about a guy that we call, he'll walk down the road, here he'll have a, uh, he'll be all in black with a backwards collar right here. He walks down the road, and what do people do? They get out of his way when he does that. A father this, father, oh, father, oh, yes, father, father, father. What? Hey, look, put a PH there and call him phony. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were outside one day. We were singing, uh, me and my wife were singing carols out here. This is a, some years ago. And here came one of those guys. He came down the road, and... Um, and he was, he was right outside here, and I just looked at him, and I said, Hey! I said, Hey, uh, uh, I guess, you know, I, I said something like, you know, like Sunday or something like that. Hey, you have church on Sunday? Yeah. Hey, let, come on, what would you, you talk about? Let's talk about the Lord. He had to face like, he didn't want to talk. I bet you if I talked about religion, he would have talked. But I want to talk about the Lord. He didn't want to talk, he just went by. He didn't even, I don't think he said a word to us. Oh, wow. Just went right on by. Didn't want to talk. You know what the problem is? He's not good with God. Right. But if I would have got out of the way for him, that's what they do. They like the high places. They like the soft rain at the high places. Uh, they like to sit at the top chairs. Uh, when, hey look, uh, uh, the Pope ain't coming to meet me. He's going to meet the President. Why? He matters more. You see? You know, when they had the earthquakes in Italy and everybody, there was people starving, he brought over diplomats to see the people. They could pay him out of their economy, but yet uh, Pope John Paul II couldn't put a dime out of his own pocket for his own people that are laying outside in Italy. Yeah. Yes. Right outside. Nothing. You know why? He wants you to pay, not him. He likes his money. That's right. Amen. Wow. Amen. But they didn't get any root. Now go to Revelation chapter 5. It's because they had no root. You see, they had no root. They had no root. Now look down at verse number five. Who's the root? It says here, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The what? The root, the root, of, David. The root of David. Who's the root? Jesus. They had no root. Yeah. You see? They had no root. What's that? They didn't have Christ. They didn't have. They weren't saved. That's See, there's four types of people. These guys are good with men, but they're not good with God. Okay? And then in verse number, um, verse number 7, verse number 7, it says, And some, and some fell 
among thorns, and, and the thorns sprung up, and did what? And choked them. It choked them. Okay, uh, let's look real fast. Go over to um, verse 22. He explains what the parable is. And he says, uh, He also that received the seed among what? Thorns. thorns. He explains, He received the seed among thorns. Is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh what? Unfruitful. Okay, on you have you have to understand something. You can't produce fruit unless you're saved. So what we have here is a guy that gets saved, and then what happens is the world comes in, and he likes the pleasures of the world. Okay, um, uh, let's go to uh, hmm. let's go to First John chapter two. And then we'll go to Luke chapter... Actually, I'm sorry. Before we go to John, 1 John, go to Luke chapter um, Luke chapter 8. It's going to be the same passage here. We'll go to 8. I'm sorry. I just want to get this. This should be first. Luke chapter 8. Look down verse number 14 in 8. Now this is the same instance, but watch how it's expressed here. He says, and that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard the word, go forth and are choked with the cares and the riches. Now watch this. And the pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to uh, perfection. Now, uh, what I what I would like you to go to is actually Second Timothy chapter four. They like the pleasures of this life. They got saved. They received the word. They're just unfruitful. Um, they're unfruitful. First John, excuse me, first Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter four. And in Second Timothy uh, chapter four, look at verse number um, look at ten. He says, For Demoth, Demoth hath for what? Forsaken me, having loved this present world. Now Demas was a good guy, and he loved the present world. You have to realize Demas was with him uh, a long time, for a while, was, was in the ministry. And then what happened was as things got a little teamy, because things do, I mean, persecution comes, and things get a little hard. And you know what happened? He's out of the ministry. Having what? Love this present world. Uh, just so you know, this is happening right now, and I hope some of these preachers are listening right now, uh, because I'm, I'm going to start preaching this at, at fellows at pastor fellowship. So I hope they don't invite me, <laughs> because here we have right here they love the present world. I've been watching preachers leave their positions as pastors. I want to go down south. Why? Well, I want to go to a red state. Why? Because you don't like it up here. Because guess what? It, we're fighting in the trenches up here, and you don't want to anymore. And you need to take that to yourself. Amen. This needs to stop. God called you, not, not the Republican Party. Oh, we want to get out of New York. Why? Well, things are hard in New York. Well, if everybody gets out, who's going to who's gonna evangelize the lost? Yeah, right there. Yeah. You know how many people said to me, why don't you come south? My wife and I, we we're going to leave, go south. They wanted us to come. You know, things are going to get hard. 
so come down south, we're not going. God called us here. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Okay, things get bad. We'll still be here. Yeah. I'll die on a ventilator inside the hospital when they pull me out of my house or whatever. Who cares? We're gonna stay here and we're gonna we're gonna preach to this lost. Everybody else can leave. Why? Loving this present world. That's what they do. They love the pleasures of this life. And next thing you know, I gotta go to a state that's gonna protect me. Know what you just did? You're relying on the state to protect you. You're not relying on the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, it, it, it killed me during that COVID. I watched all these big namers. Big names. I'm not talking about the guys in little churches. The big names. Oh, they go around the countryside. And everybody goes, oh, that guy, that guy, that guy. Oh, we're going to, that big church over there. Yeah, as soon as, the, as soon as all this stuff started happening, they ran to the lawyers. Where's that in the book? They could have gotten down on their hands and knees and begged God, but no, let's go to the lawyers. We've got to find out the information first. Get away from the information first and get with God first. Guess who makes up the information? Most of it is done by the lost. Mm -hmm. Why would you go to them? It's a, whose church is this anyway? What's yeah. it, mine? Yeah. Is it the lawyer's church? Yeah. Are the lawyers protecting... Christianity or is it God's church? That's Why would you go to these guys? That's who you go to. You go to the, you go to the Lord. It's his church. Amen. He'll keep it open. Amen. Mm -hmm. Forget the lawyers. Well I, I, well, I called the Christian Law Association. He can't help you. What's he going to help you with? Maybe an individual. Okay, he can't help you with this. God has to help it. And you know what the best part was? It was God. You know what the lawyers told everybody to do? Compromise. Make sure you got hand sanitizer. I was like, get that stuff out of here. <laughs> Take your mask off. You want to wear it? Go ahead. Other than that, I don't care. I got to, oh, what are you, well, what if they come in here? Well, they can sit down and maybe they'll get saved. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and then they don't have to be hiding behind their couch with a sock on their face looking like a stooge. You ever read Revelation chapter 1? And you people better listen up. Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 1, you know what he doesn't have on? He has everything covered. Everything is covered in Revelation chapter 1 except for one thing. You know what's not covered? His face. But if you'll notice, it's always been criminals, thieves that have a mask on. The bad guys always had a mask on. And here we are doing the devil's work, amen, amen. with a mask on. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to die. What are you afraid of? That's right. You know, I got men walking around talking, man, big man, I'm tough, I'm a tough guy. Yeah, you got a sock on your face. Why, are you afraid to catch a cold? That's what it comes down to. You're afraid. Yeah. You're afraid to catch a cold. Well, you know, there's people dying. Uh, just so you know, I just want you to know something. COVID is a religion, and, every, and everybody's getting into it. It's idolatry, and you're worshiping it. I'm glad I was able to get that out. I'm, uh, you know, I hope you're all listening. You know, you're, you, you, you've lost yourself in it. You lost the Lord in this, and you went to COVID, and you're trying to get, you're trying to get protection from the government. Well, look at your Bible. The government is not, the gov your government is, is not the place to go. And in fact, God never even mentions your government. That's right. What are you going to do? You think Biden's going to help you? <laughs> That's a joke. It is a joke. He doesn't even know where he is. Well, okay, let's get back in. These are people. What happens is now go to 1 John chapter 2. Man, I get, I get all tirade on that, man. I get mad. I'm angry. I'm not sinning. I'm angry. I'm angry about this. You, you care about what they say. You don't care about what God says. Amen. Got women controlling the houses because the men are just sitting back. Well, maybe she'll make all the decisions and it'll be okay. <laughs> men, get some. Get some, man. Yeah. Get some. You know what I'm talking about. That's right. Control your home. Yeah. Be a man and stand up, and you maybe you'd be a role model for these out here. 
just stand up. Uh, 1 John chapter 2. It says, verse number 15. Love not what? Love not the world. Yeah, love not the world. Love not the world. Okay? Neither the things that are in the world. Why is that? If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not what? Yeah. In it. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's not of the Father. It's of the world. It is. Love not the world. They had the pleasures of this world. They, they choked them right out. Look at uh, verse number 9. He says, he, uh, verse number 8, he says, but other. But other fell into good ground and brought forth what? Fruit. It brought forth, brought forth fruit. Proverbs chapter 10. We'll be stopping uh, in about a minute. Proverbs chapter 10. You know what's going to happen? What happens is big name gets COVID and everybody runs too. You know, well, you know, he got it. And then they bring their countenance down. You just don't want to get this. Hey, everybody get the shot. Mm -hmm. And then nothing happens. If, you ever, if everybody got the shot, everybody can still get COVID. How stupid is this? It doesn't make any sense. I, it, it's a joke. But anyway, yeah. Proverbs chapter 10. Can't tell people. You know why you can't tell anybody? Because they're, it's like they're, they're galactically stupid or something. They're asleep. Verse uh, number 5. In the 5 in the first part, it says, He that gathereth in the summer is what? A wise son. A wise son. A wise son. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son. Picking up the fruit. You gotta, you know, being smart about it. This fruit, it becomes what? It gets 30 fold. It gets more, brings more. And then he says, he who hath ears, uh, let him hear. This is like Daniel. Daniel was a he was loved by 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 the Lord. He was also loved by the men, Nebuchadnezzar and all them. They liked him. Why? He was good guy. He's not out to steal from anybody. Nobody had to worry about him. You could look. You can go into a lot of places, leave stuff. I could I could leave my my wallet right there. I I when I'm, when we're all done, that'll still be there. Hey, good people. And then he says in verse number nine, he says, "He that hath, uh, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Yeah. Let him hear. Allow him. Don't you know? Let you hear. You want to hear? You'll hear. Amen. Uh, there's something in the Bible. He always says. Do you know what Jesus always says? How readest thou? How are you reading these passages? It, it means something. Why? I see a lot of them running all over the place. Why? Because they're not. They're reading it in their own eyes or somebody else's eyes." instead of how the book is just set up. If it's not simple, it's probably not. Amen. 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 We're going to stop there. Next week we'll get into this part of Isaiah where he talked about seeing they can't see and hearing they can't hear. Okay? Because a lot of people get that can get that all uh, kind of messed up. And that's why people love signs and stuff. So, um, well, let's pray. Father, we thank thee, Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you and we ask you to have a good time today in the second service. Uh, Lord, uh, enrich our hearts, and, and, be, and, and Lord, let us be a worshiper of God. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.